topic. And、uh, this is the last episode for our control panel, and I will talk about the、uh, applications. And let's go to the slides. Well, in this episode, we will tell you the things about the.、Uh, sorry.、Mm, okay, we will tell you the things about、uh, the twelve types of the application, and、uh, hope that we will have a good process of it. And yeah, sorry, we're having some little problem to our slides. And then for the applications, the first step I will tell you about the hybrid test station, and we go back to the computer. Well, what is the hybrid test station?、Uh, no,、nope, the MSI. No MSI. Yeah. Well, basically, when we are running a NAS, and.、Uh, The hybrid test station in the control panel, the application tab, and in the first one,、uh, before we install that, we will see an interface like this. And when you try to start now, and it will start to download every of the apps. What we have here, we have like HD station player, and we have、uh, Google Chrome. And here, the, this one is for a music player, and this is also a music player. Facebook, of course, we will have the file station so that you can use the HD station to log into your NAS and get the files you need. Of course, Firefox, and this is a Office, a、uh, powerful Office suite. And of course, you can use the surveillance station or our QBR Pro to to check on the surveillance system that you have. And of course, music station. <clears throat> Here's a bit more、uh, expect,、uh, special. Like we have our QTS system built in inside the HD station. Well, basically, we have several ways to log into our NAS. The first one is the most common one. We will log in with the IP address, and then the second method is that we just directly use the HDMI output at the back panel of our NAS, and then go to the、uh, monitor or the TV, and we can still do a lot of things. Through it, and I will show you one by one. And of course, like Photo Station, Plex, QVR Pro, and we can use Skype so that we can like chat to someone else. Spotify, and this is our little game. And、uh, this is also、uh, like the radio station, radio stations, video station.、Uh, this is the Qnet game, YouTube. So basically, everything you need is everything you need will. It's just right here. So after you install that, we will get we will get you like this. You can click here to enable it, and you can click here to restart it, or we can click here to disable.、Uh, no, totally remove the HD station, and we can do the settings to the HD station. Well, here is. All the applications that we have already downloaded, and we can do the remove or we can disable it. So if we remove or disable it, we won't be able to see the, this application in the HD station UI. So the first thing we need to check is the settings. Right here, we can check on the output resolution. If you are having a 4K or 8K video,、uh, sorry TV, we can choose the resolution right here, and we can choose the frequency right here. And here is the overscan. Well, what is overscan? Basically, for the HDMI output, for some types of the monitor,、uh, when we like output the HDMI, we will find that the edge of the image are like too big, so、uh, it will be like over the screen for on our TV. So the overscan we can choose from zero、uh, percentage or the percentage like seventy seven percent. And we can narrow down the edge of the 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 the, the output so to, so that we can choose each of the different percentage to fit your output to your screen. And here is the remote desktop. Once you enable it, it's like using the Windows Team Viewer or the Mac Team Viewer. We can choose to use our、uh, our computer to check on what is the HD station outputting for now. And furthermore, we can also use Uh, this computer to control、uh, the HD station. So I will just directly show you the HD station UI. So we go to the、uh, 
uh, webcam. Webcam. Yeah. And this is the output of my uh, monitor. And right here we can see that uh, this is the main page. Okay. And I can control the HD station with expansion uh, mouse and keyboard. And here is like Google Chrome. Once we click in, we can just like type in the, oops, sorry, type in the IP address. And then we can see the page that we need. Mm. Okay, I, I think I'd better use the IP address in Taiwan. Yeah, and so that you, you will see. Here, it's very easy, just like we are using a computer. Of course, when we turn off that, we can choose to use like uh, QTS, it's very important. The QTS will just directly lead you into the host NAS QTS. So we can also like log in and enjoy every of the function that we are using in the QTS. And the Skype, of course, like QVR Pro, Video Station, and YouTube. Well, for me, the YouTube is a brand new user interface, so I like it a lot because it's like a total, totally different user interface uh, between NAS and uh, the computer. And uh, I, I think I, I should do one search. Like, uh, I don't know, I'm here. Search. You know that recently Celine Dion has finished her brilliant and wonderful concert in Taiwan and I really wanted to go there but the ticket is too hard to be bought. So, so sad. Okay, and uh, let me see like Facebook. For the Facebook app, it's just like using a computer Facebook. We can log in and with our password and account and we can just start to use it okay and up right here we can choose the languages and we can do the settings here we have five of the tasks the, the first one is the general we can choose to display time or not and the, ter uh, the ip of the nas or the server name and the multitasking and if we start the multitasking the HD station will like restart. So, okay, that's pretty good. And here is the second tab, the apps. For each of the uh, the apps, we can still like update or install or disable that. And in the display, the display tab. Here, the display tab is just what we what we just saw on the computer. We can adjust the resolution and we can do the over scan, or we can turn off the screen when uh, when idle. So uh, uh, we can also like set the time, like how long that we are not touching the HD station, and it will turn off the screen. Of course, we can choose our wallpaper, and the purpose here we can choose our language and input and the not. NAS audio output, you can choose the, not the audio output directly from your NAS or from your TV. And of course, we can choose to use your custom remote. Here is that about. So, this is the HD station that we have here, and it's very easy to use. You just have to plug the HDMI port into your, uh, into your TV, and you can just choose to use the uh, QTS system to start that, or we, if your NAS has a uh, quick copy button in the front panel, you just push the front panel for six seconds and you will hear the audio from the NAS that the HD station is now starting and you will see the image right, right on your TV. So let's go back to the uh, computer, MSI computer. And then I will show you the remote desktop. When we want to use the remote desktop, we just click here and we will see the image that the HDMI is now outputting to the TV. 
And what is the advantage of using a remote desktop? I, imagine that you are a parent of your child and your child is now using HD station in their room and you want to know what they are like watching so you can click the remote remote uh, remote desktop so that you can see that what they are watching or who they are you know like chatting with over Skype and if you want to stop them for watching some video or uh, chatting with someone or you just want to shut down the HDMI uh, sorry the HD session we can we can do the control right, right here. You can see me controlling the HD station on the computer with my own mouse, and uh, it's very easy to use, right? So be a good be a good parent. Leave your child their own privacy. Well, of course, as for me, I am also a child of someone else. So privacy is what we need most. Okay, so that is the uh, introduction of the HD station. And then we go back to the slides. Next, we, uh, we will go into the next topic, which is the iTunes server. Well, for iTunes server, uh, the, the concept is like, okay, let's go back to my MSI. For iTunes server, the concept is like turning my NAS into a, a, into a server that once we enable it, we can use Mac and we can uh, log in into this NAS and listen to the MP3 or MP4 uh, directly through the NAS. So the benefit is we don't have to, okay, for example, I have three or four, if in my team, I have three or four members and all of the members, they are, uh, they have thousands of songs, okay. So the only thing I have to do is to gather all of their songs into one NAS and then every of the Mac user they can just use their iTunes and connect to this NAS under the same internet section so that I can hear like all the songs and all the songs will not be uh, downloaded in my computer so it won't cost any of my hard drives so I would just keep you a live demo here since now I have already enabled the iTunes server and just get me to my Mac. Ooh. Make sure that your Mac is under the same uh, internet section with your NAS. Then here I turn off my IQ. And basically this is, this is what we will see at the first time we log into our NAS. I'm uh, sorry, the IQ. Right here, we click on this tab and see we have QNet Live, uh, Q Live and QNet Training. These two NAS are what under uh, the same internet environment, so I can choose the QNet training, and then I have like recently added movies and channels. Okay, what do I do here? Oh, this is for movie, and I, I'm choosing the music. For music, the first thing you will see here is the albums, so I will choose like here. This is what I just uh, what I have just put on my NAS. Never enough. The greatest showman, right? Yeah. So now you can easily play the music inside of your NAS with your uh, Mac, and uh, you don't have to download all the songs, any of the songs inside of your computer. So let's go back to the slides. Yeah. And uh, this is the iTunes server. And the next thing we are talking about the DLNA media server. So let's go back to my MSI. And the DLNA server is a very good part. And I basically personally love it a lot because once we enable the DLNA, well, the function is just like the iTunes server, but you know that for uh, a lot of uh, three uh, the, the, the electric devices, they are now connect, uh, supporting the function to get online on the internet. So what we can do is to um, to check if our device has the function that we can connect to the DLNA or is support the DLNA function. If it does support, then congratulations, you can use your, like your TV, your monitor or your uh, speaker to connect to your NAS and then just 
don't click grab the music, the video inside of your NAS and then play on that device. So here we can set our own device name, like the, this is my NAS and we can select default user account. And right here, if we have several of the user account, we can select several different user account. And here we can check that if I am using the admin account, then when my DLNA device connect to this NAS, they will just see the home folder or the multimedia folder under the admin account. So if I'm using the guest account, I can only see the content of the guest account. And for the scan now is to let your NAS to scan all the devices that can support the DLNA under the same internet section. And reset is to reset your media server. For the advanced settings, when we click on that, we will go to the media streaming add-on, which is a QNAP app. So uh, if you don't have, uh, if, if you do not download it, so when you want to turn on the DLNA server, the, the NAS will automatically download it for you. And we can choose the general settings like the name, default account, network interface, port, or the menu language. For here, uh, well, the menu style, I will also show you later, but for now I will choose to use all category and we can choose our own custom uh, type style. Like here we can choose to have, okay, for video, shared video, video collection, rating, uh, seven, one, two, three, oh, sorry, eight of the filters. So if we click all of it, we will see the filter on our DLNA devices later. So just assume that we use the all category. And the browsing settings, we can choose to use uh, for photo, we can choose to use like original. So if you are having a 4K picture and you are having a 4K monitor, uh, I will suggest you to use original size if you want to see high resolution of your, feed, uh, of your photos. But if you don't want that, or you just have a like 1080p, we can just choose to use large thumbnail so it will give you a compress to your picture. And the music title display, we can choose to use like track and title or a title with album or with artist, something like that by your, uh, by your choice. And the video title display style, we can use embedded information for just using the file name. And the media receivers right here is what we have under the same internet section. And the LG one is what I'm going to demo to you later. So let's go back to the webcam again. And this is my HD station. So I am now, uh, each of the monitors, they will have different uh categories and uh, different ways for you to get into your dlna system for here for this lg one is in the photo and videos so i'll just click this one and here the three three like the same 1282t a73 qnet live these are the dlna server that i have already turned on so i will choose this one and right here we can see music, video, and photos. Uh, we just we just see that I can use different of the categories like uh, videos. I can choose to use original or the thumbnail for uh, for photos. Sorry, and music I can choose with different uh, display mode and videos. Here is the share video rating folder that we have just saw that. I assume that we are going to use the all categories. So this is what we have here. So uh, if you don't want that many of the categories, we can just use the custom type and choose your own. And the share videos, these videos are what I have just put on the, on the NAS, the top to t So it's very easy to use, like you are connecting your TV to your NAS and grab the videos, photos, and music down to your TV. In this case, you just need one cable, internet cable, and you don't need to use HDMI to use the HD station and directly output in the uh, image into your uh, monitor. So it's very easy to use right here. And I click one of the song 
and now it's loading and now it's playing it's very easy to use and yes this is me seeing the never enough from the movie credits from it and let's check if the download speed is fast enough yes because it's under the same internet section so it's very fast okay so that is the DLNA server let's go back to the slides I believe that I believe you will ask me some question like why you have your own music video because I am not only working in QNet, also I'm a I'm a you know like a YouTuber. I do songs. Okay. The next topic we will go to the multimedia management. This will take us a little bit longer, so let's go back to the computer. The multimedia management. Here is the overview like what of the services you have already turned on and this is the library and the folder but basically i will suggest you to check on the folder before you check on the library here you just need to add the folders inside of your in, in, inside here and for the folders in this list the photos the music the videos will be uh, sort will be indexed by the nas and I can choose the multimedia. I only want videos and for download, I want photos only and for public and homes, I want everything. And when you choose that and you apply, the NAS will do the index by itself. And then we can check right here to see if the current status, the indexing is ready or, or not, or not doing the indexing and the last update and the location, which, uh, sorry, where the files are saved at and how many uh, search capacity it has been used. We can do the schedule setting or we can just do the real-time settings every time we add new uh, media, multimedia files inside of our NAS under that specific folder. But when will we use the scan by schedule? Like uh, at a daytime, work time, I will use my NAS to do all the jobs like uh, whatever, like a VPN or something. And at a nighttime, no one's working, so no one is logging into my NAS. That is the time I can use the resource of my NAS to, to do the scan. So this is what we can uh, use the schedule or scan by your choice. And for here, the thumbnail quality, we can also choose general or high. Yeah. We can do the scan now, or we can deactivate the media library or we can rebuild because when you are using the media library for long and long time, you, you, you might find that you might find that, uh, you have a lot of different name of the index, but actually their uh, content or their concept are basically just the same. Uh, we are users and if we are not uh, careful enough, basically people make mistakes. If we are not careful enough, maybe we will have the same category, but just a different name. So when this situation comes more and more, it will bother you a lot. So that is why we have the review media library indexing. We will do this all over again and like construct uh, after destroy. Yeah, we get off everything and we start again. So for well, recently I, I have just seen a movie from Rock, and uh, the the name of the movie is like Sky Skyscraper or something, and his wife in the movie just say a very important sentence like turn off and turn on, and everything will go back well. So this is the same concept, okay? So uh, here is the media folder we just talked and the media add-on we can do uh, well basically sorry this is the service for taiwan people and once we have installed this add-on and these are all for the uh, video station and this is for the photo station uh, for what special is like this add-on function we can now support uh let me check here face detection so once you install that we can start to uh, like train your photo station to give you a more convenient way that in the future you put your uh, videos inside of your NAS and it can give you a face detection and just sort your picture more easily. So uh, since this 
what since, since this four uh, five of the add-on will cost the uh, CPU and the DRAM resources. So uh, as a add-on, so if you need it, you download it. And this is the on-the-fly transcoding task. Well, basically, I will choose this one. What is on the task uh, here? 